Hey, this is Paul Payton with Focal Splash, and I just wanted to show some Lightroom workflow. So I've put in a card into my card reader, and I've got these two pictures on the card. Like this, they're both selected to import. Uh, I have copy, so it moves them from the card onto my hard drive. I'm building a minimal preview. I don't want to import suspected duplicates. File renaming. I like to rename the files just by adding a sequence number to them, just so that they get a slightly different name. I don't imply any presets during import. I put them in a subfolder um, under pictures. I have Lightroom 8 because I have had Lightrooms 1 through 9 <laughs> now and uh, organized by date and this is the date format I use it's the destination that's the last one so I put them in pictures and you'll see it it'll create this it's grayed out because it's going to create it so that's it real simple import and then create the folders and put them right there into 2015 just like that. That's where they are on my hard drive. Now what I like to do is I like to keep them on my fast internal hard drive until I'm done processing them. And then I put them down here onto my uh, external hard drive. So, so just while I'm processing them, it keeps it going faster. So here's an image and it is, as I was told by the photographer, that it would be underexposed. So let's just see what... Uh, Lightroom does with white balance automatically and auto tone. And it brought it up just in Lightroom. You can see this particular image because it was underexposed, has a lot of noise. This one has less noise. It was exposed properly. Alright, so let's work on this for now. You notice it looks fairly properly exposed because. I went auto on that and it bumped it up by a stop and a quarter to get this exposure. Yeah, that's pretty good to start with just by hitting auto white balance and, and uh, auto tone. Um, drop the highlights down a little bit, see if we can recover a little bit more of the highlights there and bring up the shadows a little bit because she is kind of in shadow here and I'm going to like that. Even bring up the exposure a little bit the exposure is based on this white and you know on the total image here and we don't really care if it gets blown out too much so we want it to be her a little bit brighter and then what I'm going to do is uh, grab a radial gradient that's not a radial gradient it's called something else what it's going to do is we're going to bump up the exposure a little bit on it you can double click here and zero out everything so you just bump up the exposure at some random amount and apply it, spin it a little bit here, and of course that doesn't look good because it's way too overexposed, but bumping her face up by 70, 80, that looks pretty good to me. Alright, we'll zoom in. Alright, so still a lot of noise, I think the tone is better, so let's go ahead and uh, go to the details right here. And let's just sharpen it a little bit since we're going to be taking the noise out. Holding the shift, I'm sorry, holding the alt key. You can see what it's going to sharpen. We don't want to sharpen any of that noise. Just the edges. Something like that. And taking the noise out, we just have to visualize this. Just looking here, we're at 100%. So, And that looks better already. We don't want to take out... Um, too much noise because really when you do a noise reduction you're just adding blur <laughs> you're taking those little dots and you're blurring them together so let's bump up the noise all the way up noise reduction and give it a second you can see it did a nice job of smoothing out that noise but pretty much blurred quite a bit of stuff so let's go to 50 percent and there was a lot of noise in the image and we did sharpen it, uh, let's sharpen it but to 70 here. And we're not going to be seeing this image this close. We're going to be seeing it like this. Um, maybe 
like this. Let's go back to this uh, tool here. I'm going to brighten our hair up back here a little bit. In this end spot right here. Now there's lots of ways to do it. You can do this with the brush. For instance, right now, I could using this tool, I could hit brush right here. And it will allow me to paint right here with this brush. All right, something like that. So it's using the, it's the radial filter. There we go. And this is the point where I would take this into Photoshop. Make sure I'm only selected on this and not both of them. And hit Command E or Control E on Windows. So I wanted to come in here so we could zoom in. And with the healing brush, which is right here, uh, we could use a spot healing brush in this situation. Hold the shift and click through there just like that. Or I could have tapped here and chosen it. And that way you just circle, put a little spot on anything you want to uh, want to remove, which doesn't really remove it. It is actually replacing it and blending it with pixels that Photoshop thinks are similar enough. And with the noise and the smoothness we've already created in this image, we're not really going to need to uh, do much else. You know, when you're zoomed in like this, you see stuff that you're not really going to see. Uh, you know, freckles you probably wouldn't want to get rid of. You know, there's a spot right there. You know, whether you want to get rid of them or not, it's really going to depend on the client and the the artist and and you know what's your opinion of the matter so I think we're done in Photoshop so just hit control W or close or file close something like that say yes to save it go to Lightroom and it has created another document this is before Photoshop and this is after Photoshop and you can't really see much difference because we're not looking in so close but uh, one thing I wanted to show you was brightening her eyes a little bit so I would use the brush tool and just bring up the exposure to some general bit there and just begin to paint in the right spot here yep that looks horrible don't go into the black area around the outside edge. And there you have it. We have alien eyes. And so then just bring down the exposure. You know, we could bring it to what it, what it is originally, bring it up slightly, something like that. Just half a stop, maybe not even half a stop. To give her just a little bit more light in her eyes. Let's do the next image. First we go to basic, auto white balance, see what happens. And the, the idea here is actually her hair is brown, not red. And that uh, the white balance before was making her hair look like it was red, but it's not red. And tone, well auto tone, and it brightened it up. You can see there's a lot less noise. This is just a better image. And bring down the highlights even more. If we can recover some of that brightness and bring up the shadows, give her her face and things a little bit more brightness. That's too much. That looks good. And zoom in. There we go. Much better image. All right. Move back out. Yeah, I think the cropping and and everything on this looks pretty good. Uh, we could maybe filter out that way a little bit. 
but I love the crop in uh, Photoshop. See, it's cropping off a lot of the top here. The original crop had a little bit more headroom. Um, so what I'm going to do is right here, I think the brightness is already a lot better. The color balance is good. We just need to turn her slightly, I think. So control E, take her into Photoshop, and I'll show you what I mean about the crop. And what I mean is, we hit uh, C for the crop tool. It's R in Lightroom, so there's that. I want to go ahead and keep the same ratio we had by uh, before in 4 by 6 All right, and so uh, what I mean is this. You could content-aware crop, and if I turn this, just to straighten the lines up a little bit, I can actually increase the crop, which I don't need to increase it down here. So I'll leave it like that. And you see these places here where it would leave, you know, strangeness. It's going to fill those in. Let's see how it does it. Does it. Sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's kind of funny looking. We'll take a second, and it's filling in that most likely just with the with what's around it, and you would not be able to tell. See, just like that. Let's zoom in. We know it created this section here. That looks fine. Created some down up here, and that looks fine and around the edges and worked perfectly so you, you do need to check sometimes so there standing up a little more straight instead of bent over might have been the camera it might have been her and again we'll just go in look for healing brush this is the spot healing brush and just do this. Oh, hairs. You can see this image has a lot more detail in it because it, it didn't have the noise and the blurred effect that the other image had. You know, this isn't Photoshop, not Lightroom. Now if you want to get rid of that hair there. It did a pretty good job. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, in this image, it looks like it's doing a great job. But sometimes it doesn't do that great a job. I'll show you something else here. Um, the hair coming across here. And um, yeah, I think maybe you can see it. Nope. Spot healing brush is doing a really good job. Like I said, there are circumstances where you wouldn't want to use it. Uh, but this time, it looks like it's doing great. Like here's one that I would not use spot healing brush for. And it's for doing something like this. I would change it to the healing brush. Right? With the healing brush, you have to choose where you're going to get the pixels from. And then, where they go and paste those pixels wherever you want to paste them. You can see I'm pasting the edge of the nose here. I didn't want to do that. Let's choose right here and just paint right here. Get too crazy with it. Command Shift F brings up the fade dialog. We'll just fade what we did, bring back about 50%. Usually is good. And it leaves the texture, but it just diminishes them. Diminishes the brown here. Here's a good spot. Just get some skin texture from. Remove. Kind of removing the brown there. Control shift function. Bring it down to about 50. And that way the texture is not totally removed. Just lessened. And that's the way it looked, and then we did that to it. All right, so I'm liking that. Let's add a new curves adjustment layer, bringing, adding just a little bit of contrast, brightness here, and then Control I, painting with a white brush. Paint that in right here. 
at 100%. We can adjust this in a moment. And we're going to give a little more brightness here. But we like the contrast. Okay. Want to give the eyes life, not just not just brightness. All right, and then so before and after, before and after. I like it. A little too much. We could tone it down, but I think it's going to be fine. And um, do some more here. Since we're here. We can create a uh, new layer, make it a soft light layer, fill it by hitting shift delete and 50% gray. Also a fill up here. You know, I do like my uh, right here. You can do that. I like my keystrokes. Now we're going to paint. I hit D to set these back. X to switch them, D brings them back to default. Painting with white at about 10%. Let's add just a little bit of contrast here. Bright up, brighten this space up a little bit. There. Peek right here a little bit. Here. You can also do this at 30%. And then lower the opacity of it. Maybe that's a little too, uh, call aggressive. Yeah. Keep its bow. A bit of highlight. No, it's just a little bit of highlight. Chin, give it a little bit of highlight here. Go and kick her light. And painting with black at about 10% or, you yeah. Give her a cheekbone here a little bit. Oh, there's a little pout line right there. And line down here. Down along her nose right here. All right. Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? No. So then I would go in the filter, blur. Gaussian blur. And bump it up until I think it, you know, the lines that I created are are gone. About like that. Then lowering the opacity, lower it all the way, bring it back just a little bit. So we're about fifty percent. Right. Again, lowering the opacity all the way. Up all the way. <laughs> that looks horrible, I agree. Lower it all the way, and even even 35%. There. Now, if you didn't know that I just did that, and you saw this, you would think that looks fine. You wouldn't even notice uh, that there was any changes. So, there you go. All right. Let's look at one more thing. Since I already have this layer here, I can paint with white at 10% and just tap on the eyes. Give the lights of the eyes a little bit more brightness. And there. Now, I took a long time to do this. I can take 10% uh, here and add a little bit of dimension. You know, a little light on top. And with X painting with dark, a little darkness down here. The idea just adds a little bit of a dimension to her. 
you know, there's a little more shadow here, a little more brightness up here. You know, her arm should be a cylinder, not just a flat. It looks pretty flat to me, so I'm cylinderizing in her arm here. Right. Okay. Painting with black here. Adding a little contrast to her hair. You know, adding a little bit at three. Go in here and look for the look for some dark areas where you want to add dimension to her hair. And then X on the light areas, you may add highlights to her hair. And nobody will know that you did anything because it's very subtle. All right, so there you have it. Any questions, let me know. If you think I'm just crazy and I did all kinds of crazy stuff, then let me know that too. And sorry the tutorial was a little bit long, but there you have it. <laughs> okay, so thanks for watching. You can uh, follow me at Focal Splash on YouTube or on Facebook. Thanks. Thank <music> you.